This is a quick and easy guide to downloading and installing Maya and what pirates have to do with the Maya interface. I'm going to share with you a free resource that I built for you to help you decode the Maya interface, take you on a quick little tour around so you can get up and running as smoothly as possible. Also, just to be clear, why would you give up your precious gigabytes of space? It's one of the top industry standard software for the visual effects or animated film industry, 3D assets for games, character animation for a commercials, architecture, medical visualization, you name it. It's owned by a company called Autodesk, which is not a sponsor of this video. So I want to get you up and running using Maya as quickly as possible. So let's jump into it. Step number one, go to the link below this video and head to the Autodesk website. You will get a free 30 day trial, or if you're a student, you can get a year for free, which is super nice. You should see something like this, which is where you can go ahead and download the free trial, which we will click on. If you're a student, you can also access the student version from here by just choosing education as the option. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and use home use, hit next. And at this point, you'll need to create an Autodesk account if you haven't already or log in with one you already have. I'm going to go ahead and create a new account. So hit the create account button. I'm going to enter my first name is Thaddeus and my last name, which is Andreatus and my email at azialarts.com. Confirm my email and choose a password. You'll have to agree to the Autodesk terms of use and then go ahead and hit create account. I'm going to hit done. Then you'll need to enter a phone verification. So I'm going to enter my phone number and choose text and send verification code. Okay, I got it. I'm gonna enter in my code here and hit verify. It's gonna ask you a little bit of information about your company, if you have one or the reason you're using it. I'm just gonna go ahead and choose, I want to try this product for the first time, even though I've been using Maya since I was 12. Choose my industry field, which is, let's just say film and TV and my role as a 3D animator and job level business owner entrepreneur. Okay, hit next. You'll need to enter your state and zip code and hit next again, which will take you to the download page. So we're almost there. Go ahead and hit install and accept. It'll download a, an EXE package here, which you can go ahead and click on. And this window is gonna pop up here. I'm just gonna leave it default and hit next. And I've already installed these three things, but you wanna go ahead and check these on. Arnold is the built-in renderer inside of Maya that's gonna give you the highest quality renders you can make. Bifrost has to do with particles and effects. So you can uncheck that if you're not planning to get into that. And Substance is a super helpful tool for look development. So I definitely install that as well. So go ahead and hit install. For me, this took about 10 minutes, but it will depend on your computer. Okay, now that it's finished installing, we're just gonna go ahead and press start. And you will be greeted with this window, which is new for some of the more recent versions of Maya. If you're looking for additional resources by Autodesk to help you, click the get started button. But I'm gonna just go ahead and jump right into the interface, which is by clicking new. And this will create a new scene and load Maya up here. If you've logged in correctly, you should see your name up here in the top right corner. So let's get to making our first little creation inside of Maya, which I will use to describe where everything is here. Although you might be overwhelmed at first, my goal here is to demystify this interface and help you feel a little more comfortable as you're jumping into this. So I've developed for you a Maya menu treasure map, which will direct you to different parts of the interface based on what you're looking to do. And I think that this is actually a really helpful way to think about the interface instead of saying, I need to know what every single button does. The first thing you just have to do is decide what do I want to do? And then you'll start to learn these various paths. All you have to do is memorize what is the path to that particular, in this case, treasure on the treasure map. What's the path to that particular thing I wanna do? I will learn that path. And then what's the next thing I wanna do? I'll learn that path. Next thing I wanna do, I'll learn that path. You'll know your way around the whole interface in no time. That being said, there's a few simple areas. First zone up here is the file menu, of course, which we know from most other softwares that we use. We have the file, save, open, export stuff down here. Create is probably gonna feel a little bit new. That's where we're gonna go ahead and create different types of polygons, lights, cameras. Selection is gonna be stuff having to do with selection. And it goes on from here along to the right with different types of tools you can use 
in your three scenes. Now, it's important to note these first few here, all the way up to mesh where it starts to specifically talk about modeling and polygons, those are all gonna stay the same over here, but this little drop down is gonna change the rest of the menus to be either focused on rigging, or focused on animation or effects or rendering. It's just a way of staying organized while you're working and so you don't have to look at all of the menus all at once. So just remember if you're looking for a menu up here and you can't find it, it might be because you are in the wrong phase. So I'll stick to the modeling phase here, but something else I wanna note is that if I come here and I choose edit mesh, for example, and bevel, which is a, a tool you can use on a 3D model, you will also notice that this little icon here is the same as this icon here on the right. And that's because this shelf is just another way of looking at the same tools that are already in this dropdown. So these dropdown menus have all of the tools of Maya, but Maya also has this shelf here, and this shelf is just the most used of those tools, which you will find in this menu, exposed for easy access. So similar to up here that you have phases, you can choose modeling, rigging, animation. You can also choose different categories in the shelf. So I'm in the modeling shelf right now. I could switch to the rendering shelf or the animation shelf and it would have some different most used tools um, for those type of jobs. So this is an important aspect of Maya that there are more than one way to do the same thing. So as you work with Maya, as you get more comfortable, you will get comfortable with your favorite way of doing things, whether that's going up here to the menus or choosing it from the shelf. As I'm teaching Maya, I usually like to mention one or two different ways as I go, just so people aren't confused because the same thing could be done in two different ways. I'd like to think of this top menu as the main menu where everything is, and this shelf and other button areas are just exposing those buttons. For example, the save buttons up here are the same as what you will find in the file menu. Okay, so that's all of your shelf of tools up here. That's everything you do in Maya, all of the operations you do during modeling, rendering, and stuff like that, they're all going to be found up there. That brings us to the left side here, and this shelf is all the tools we need to interact with our 3D environment, whether that be selecting, or scaling, or translating, or rotating, which I'll just get back to in a moment. So what I'm actually going to do is create a cube by either clicking this cube right here in the modeling shelf, or coming up here to create polygon primitives and choosing cube. Now, when I've created the cube, it's gonna be created automatically in my scene. And you will see on the world outliner here on the left that a new cube has been created. And that's because this shelf here is gonna be showing me everything that I have inside of my 3D environment. It's just a list or a spreadsheet of the things that you have in your scene. And then of course, this is the 3D representation or render of those things. And if we come over here to the right side, we also have the channel box, which is gonna be not just a list of those objects, but what the specific object that you have selected, translation, rotation, or scale values, different things about the object. And if I come over here to the attribute editor, it's just another way of looking at similar information, just more of it about the object. So all these menus on the right side are really about looking at the object that you have selected, modifying it, things like that. So I have the cube, I have it displaying here in the outliner, and I have the settings for that cube on the right side here. So I mentioned this shelf here that has the tools we need to interact with with our 3D space. So if I come over here to the translate button and choose it, then I can actually have a tool to translate the cube by clicking on one of these arrows and dragging it in my environment. Or I can choose the rotation button and rotate it or scale button and scale it. All of those tools are here on the left side. And if I want to move my camera around the space, so look around the 3D object, we just have a few simple key commands in order to navigate around the 3D space. First one is I'm gonna hold down Alt and left click. And when I hold down Alt and left click, it's gonna rotate around the point I'm focused on. It's orbiting around it. If I middle click, it's gonna just translate my camera from side to side. And if I right click, it's going to zoom. So I'm left clicking and dragging to rotate, middle clicking and dragging to translate, and right clicking and dragging to zoom. You can also use your mouse wheel to zoom, both work. So that's how we navigate around our 3D environment, which brings us down to the bottom 
which is where we have our timeline. This is like a video timeline that you might be playing through. And on the right side, we here have the playing controls. We have some settings for how long the sequence that we're playing through or the animation that we're working on is and the frame rate and a few other things. And at the bottom here, I have a little helpful bar of text that's going to give me some tips for whatever tool or thing I'm doing or give me some feedback if I've done something wrong. It's going to give show me that there's an error or something like that. That's where I'll be going to see it down at the bottom here. So let's go ahead and save our cube because we definitely don't want to lose all the work that we did on it. So I'm going to go up here and hit file and save scene. I'm going to call it cube and I'm going to hit save as and that will have saved our cube as a scene that if we then wanted to go open, we could come up to file open scene and there would be our cube to open. You can find your next step in learning Maya on the screen here. If you don't see it there, let me know in the comments what you would like to learn and I will see you in the next one.